Hopefully yeah. I turned on the recording. Great, Mary. Here we go. All right. Hi, everybody. Again, I'm a design project manager with the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board. Nice to be with you all today. We're partnering with the city on this project um, and very excited for the public art integration into the North Commons Park uh, phase one improvements project. So I'll be relatively brief in overviewing what the um, project components are here, but um, generally this is a major renovation in addition to the recreation center. Um, we are rebuilding the water park and then site improvements, including sort of a new parking lot are included in the project. Um, the sort of uh, major and city funded um, public art piece is located on the building facade facing north and west. So north toward Golden Valley Road and west toward the water park and the plaza and the main entry to the building. Um, and we are going to be removing the uh, aquatics building that exists today between the water park and Golden Valley Road and moving that to the south side, connecting it to the new the building. The building will include uh, a field house space with uh, up to three gyms and an elevated walking track. Um, the aquatics wing off to the west is going to basically re be replacing the showers, locker rooms, restroom facilities that serve the water park itself. Uh, we have a planned sort of fitness space, um, concession area, and then much of the programming space in the existing building will be renovated as well. Um, we are preserving the area that is currently used for ice uh, when we have a full on winter, as well as community events like Festival of Fathers that occur at the park. So those those areas will be um, remain open both during construction, but also um, when construction is complete. Uh, so the view of the front entry here shows you walking south toward the new facility. Uh, to the right is the fencing that is protecting the, the water park. Um, the main entry is in the background and then just a generic sort of placeholder for um, facade mounted public art is shown in the upper left. Within the building itself, one of the, the major sort of new improvements that we're hoping to capitalize on here is the, the combination of our aquatics facility and the recreation center itself. Uh, under the current alignment and what will occur this summer is folks who are coming to the water park are not going to be engaging with um, our recreation staff and all of the program offerings we have in our facility. So by combining those buildings into um, one space, we now have sort of a um, one stop shop for everything North Commons, everything programming, aquatics, fitness, um, leisure, whether it's the walking track um, or use of some of the programming spaces and the um, multi-purpose rooms that exist today. Um, one of the mural opportunities that is uh, funded by the park board, I think this is opportunity number four here is a mural um, that's a sort of a feature mural that you would see as you walk in the main entry um, uh, in the background here. And obviously that's just a placeholder for public art. Um, in that location, the, the the mural here, the mural in the background here that is um, right below where the field house um, sign is pointing is actually an existing mural that we're looking to preserve that would become sort of an interior mural upon completion of the project. The field house is reduced in elevation down into the ground. That's mostly to sort of accommodate neighbors across James Avenue to not build a 35, 40 foot tall building in a residential neighborhood. So by reducing um, the elevation of the gym itself, we are reducing the height of the facility that would be fronting James Avenue and those residences. Um, in the background here, you can see again a placeholder mural on the north side of the field house. That is um, opportunity number five in the call for artists. Uh, the field house is really intended to be multifunctional, right? It'd be one of the largest interior spaces, if not the largest interior space in the park board system for not just youth and adult athletics, but also community events, job fairs, um, festivals, other things that 
would want to occur in an indoor setting like this. Um, off in the background of this is the vinyl mural opportunity. This is um, opportunity number two. Um, we'd like to provide some sort of translucent, transparent screening with vinyl artworks applied to the windows on the east side of the field house. And that's really just sort of privacy for residents, but also obviously the ability to make the space uh, more attractive, beautiful, bring some of the community stories to life through um, through some vinyl murals placed upon those east facing windows in the field house. And then within the existing building, the sort of current lobby space will be expanded to be sort of a youth lounge. Um, that youth lounge is intended to just really be multifunctional. Um, there'll be a small sort of performance stage built that can provide informal seating, but also the opportunity to host sort of small scale performance. Um, and we'd like to have a mural. This is opportunity number three as a backdrop to that sort of performance space. Um, this is a space that will have sort of the teen room, senior room, craft spaces, multi-purpose rooms, sort of all radiating around this space. Um, but this focus here in the center is this, this stage and some sort of multifunctional seating of various types. And then um, nothing really public art related with this image, just noting that we are completely rebuilding the water park um, with this project. Um, generally in the same location, generally with some of the same facilities, but obviously fixing many of the mechanical problems that we've had over the years and keeping that that water park running that was built um, many, many years ago and renovated, I believe, in like 1998 and is in need in serious of um, serious renovation. Uh, so that that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to go back to any of those images, happy to discuss any of the elements of the project in more detail if questions arise. I'll pass it back to you, Dudley. Thanks, Dan. Um, we're going to see those images again and talk more specifically as we go through the RFQ, the um, call for artists and the RFQ. Um, but if you have any questions specific to the project and the park board or the overall park, those would be this would be a good time to ask Dan about that. And of course, uh, you're welcome to put those in the chat. Um, great. Uh, you have a question, Roger, for Dan? Um, yes, as far as okay. construction, will um, construction be going on during the installation process? Yeah, I, mean, I think, thank you, Roger, for the question. I think each installation is probably different. Um, I think many of the interior spaces will need to wait until we're at a point within construction that it's safe for an artist to be in that space. And I think the exact schedule of that sort of is a is a big TBD, but I would expect it to occur toward the latter portion of that installation. Um, the, the exterior artwork that's integrated into the facade, I think will need to be more highly coordinated to um, ensure that the contractor is putting in the appropriate sort of backing and structure to facilitate the artwork. So that's sort of a some work that'll happen early on in the process. And then if there are elements that need to be installed in advance of uh, the wood cladding or some other element of the flashing, that would need to be sort of highly coordinated with the general construction schedule as well. So um, I think it will depend on the type of art that's going in and some of the work that might be needed in terms of coordination. Um, but there will be, I don't expect that we're going to be completing construction 100% in advance of the artwork being installed. I think there'll be some overlap. Yeah, great question. Um, I see Paul has a hand up. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm looking at the RFQ and under section H, how to apply. Uh, you know, has the intent to apply form, and then it just says upload completed application. But we don't have a link on where to upload, or who's sent it to, or what format. Do you want PDF, JPEG? Like, um, how is this supposed to be submitted? We're gonna get into that in a little bit. Um, are there any more questions for Dan that are specific to um, the the actual physical? 
project Kata. Hi, yes. A lot of times when working in new construction or a rebuild like this, um, it's nice to be able to talk to the contractor or the person on site about the finish and the substrate that they're working on. Will the artist, the ones that are being installed in place, will they be able to communicate with the building team about what kind of paint is being used, what substrate is being used? Um, and have any suggestions. Um, it's great to have that communication if possible. Yeah, I think the answer to that, Kata, is, is yes. We've done we've done sort of murals integrated into construction projects, both new builds and renovation before, and we are always connecting. And the reason that we're identifying the artists here while we're still very much in the design phase of this improvements project is to ensure that facility is going to be built in a manner that allows for that artwork to be installed and maintained and durable for the long term. So there will be a definite um, conversation around those questions. Um, I do see a question in the chat, Dudley from Marsha. Will the selected artists be consulting with me, Dan, for design creative direction or who determines approval for final product? Do you want to maybe take a first stab at that or Mary and then I can come in too? Yeah, and I think Marcia, you raised your hand too. I don't know if you have more you want to add to that question in the chat. Yeah, I was just um, going to say my question out loud, but okay. uh, then I already read it. So you can go ahead and <laughs> respond to that. Yeah, um, and that does get a little bit into process, but I think Dan was kind of tipping his hat there that obviously by selecting all the artists through a qualification rather than a design, right? We're not asking for your design. Our hope is that you are working closely um, with our team throughout. This project's a little unusual, I understand, because um, we're collaborating with the park board and the interior work is really under the jurisdiction um, and funding from the a park board, whereas the large facade project comes out of the art and public places um, program. Um, but I think for all intents and purposes, we're really approaching it as um, a unified effort. And so I will be working with Dan um, to support all artists through the design and implementation phase. Um, there is an expectation of community engagement, which I think is outlined pretty well in the RFQ. Um, and that will involve some coordination with me and also with our steering committee who um, whose voices are already reflected in some of the guidelines and criteria. Mary, Dan, yeah, do you want to add to that? I was just only going to state that we, through our elected board, do not review and approve artworks through any sort of formal approval process. Um, we do usually submit sort of a final design as an informational piece to the board with a background on the engagement that led into that design and really the staff are checking for any issues that may lead to sort of, um, uh, you know, whether it's a speech issue, a political issue or something that might be um, not appropriate for a public space. But beyond that, we're really looking to the process to inform the design and we're not sort of saying as staff, no, you can't do this or yes, you can't do that. And Mary, maybe you can expand on that if you have, if you'd like to. Uh, so you Dudley will be going over the artist selection criteria. The design criteria are very similar to the artist selection criteria. The questions that we ask are slightly different, but we have the same six overarching criteria that we ask all artists to design to. Final designs are always approved by the Minneapolis Arts Commission. We do not take design review to the Minneapolis City Council. They have delegated that authority to the Arts Commission. We also don't bring designs to the Arts Commission until they're fully cooked. And we feel pretty confident that the commission will support the design. Um, but it's a, just our way of saying the design is now approved and this is the design. And the artist can stop designing now <laughs> and stop and the community can stop asking for changes. <laughs> so, Does that answer your question, Marcia? 
Yes, that was very helpful context. Thank you. Great. Any other questions for Dan um, about construction or other things from the park board perspective? Okay. Thanks, Dan. Um, all right, here goes. This will be uh, hopefully my first successful sharing of a PowerPoint with no technical issues. Yes, do we see my PowerPoint? It's up, it's just loaded. It's just loaded. Okay. Seven minutes away? Yeah. And then it only took me five minutes to get back to the gas station. All right. And I'll just ask everyone's um, staying on mute until we have some questions. Feel free to put them in the chat. Um, okay. So. This is our agenda, um, and then hopefully we'll have some time for questions at the end. So uh, this is um, just the program that is funding this work, Art in Public Places. Uh, I'm not gonna read the slides in the PowerPoint. Um, I believe, Mary, the PowerPoint will be available with the recording and the questions and their answers. Yes. This is on the city website where the call is located, but just to, to ground us in the program that is making this possible. And um, this is a longstanding program over 30 years. And I think many regions look to Minneapolis uh, for this work and for this model. And um, I think the values, not only because they have a cute little icon are are worth um, thinking about. I know a lot of voices are reflected in what the Art in Public Places program is, is trying to achieve here. Um, I know there's been some questions about process and we've talked about it. I think this slide is really useful. Um, obviously, this there's years of planning that um, predates the RFQ. Um, and even my involvement. So there's been a lot of planning, pursuing a funding, working with the architect. Um, we are in this artist selection phase. Um, I'm sorry, the DE in developed design is a little disjointed, um, but the developing of the design and the approval and the fabrication rate that will all come after the team is hired. I think we're very sensitive to the fact that um, you know, we don't want to ask people to design things until they are hired and compensated and that that's a deep collaboration. Um, and, you know, construction being what it is right now, Dan, correct me if I'm wrong, we still assume um, that the end of summer of 2026 is, is a target for when we might have everything installed and have a community celebration, but it's a target, right? Yeah, I think we're anticipating construction to begin summer of 25. I think there are elements that may be completed toward the end of 2026 and construction is very likely to go into 2027, um, but sort of TBD on the exact elements. So we can talk about phasing of the project later because our intent is to um, build the new construction first so we can keep the existing recreation center open to uh, community during a portion of the project. So that will impact sort of how various elements are scheduled within that construction timeline. Great. Okay. Um, these are the goals um, that the, we have a, a steering committee that represents um, a lot of stakeholders in the community and um, for North Commons Park. So, this list uh, can, is generated by them. Um, and I am going to read this one because I think this is the core of what you need to be thinking about. So you'll notice the first goal is to have a strong sense of place and a connection to North Minneapolis and its community so that the public art is rooted in the community and really celebrating and reflecting it back. That is primary. 
Um, the work should foster feelings of vibrancy, creativity, safety, and belonging. The work should celebrate the natural beauty of North Commons Park. Um, if you don't know the park well, uh, it's over 25 acres and um, we focused on the building, but to the west and to the south, there is uh, a lot of green space. Um, there are mature trees, there's a small hill, there are winding paths. There are lots of other things that happen in the park. Um, and the, the park board, uh, Dan has put the link to the improvements project page. Um, but, but in addition on the park board's website, you can find um, their North area master service plan, which has a lot of values that they've done engagement around, like preserving the mature trees and really celebrating what's already there in terms of the natural beauty and not just the facilities. Um, to be welcoming to a wide range of park users. Uh, again, thinking about not just um, folks in the building, but how everyone engages with the park, whether that is a person who lives across the street, person who's coming for an activity, or a person who might be visiting um, for a basketball tournament or to, to use the water park with their cousins or whatever. There's a wide range of park users. And lastly, to be durable and able to be maintained in Minneapolis's climate and urban environment. And I think also for the interior spaces, right, um, to be durable and maintained in terms of the specific uses that those indoor spaces see. So these are the primary goals that the selection panel will also be considering. Um, when we are looking at your application. And I'm gonna pause here. I welcome questions. Obviously we can talk about these more. Okay. So now I'm gonna review each of the opportunities. You've heard Dan talk about them already. Um, the first one really the signature piece is the facade artwork and it will be integrated into that corner of the building um it's slightly recessed this picture doesn't capture it but it it does wrap around um so the dimensions do reflect that angle as it goes from the north side the front there to the west side so you are looking south as though you were standing at Golden Valley Road. Um, it is the gateway for the park. And um, in our discussions about this work, um, words like iconic and recognizable have come up. Um, and I think there's uh, this opportunity, while the, the image is there, um, I really think this is a place to really push you to think about what is possible. Um, how can it be visible? How can it meet all that criteria? I'm mindful of the fact that West Broadway Avenue is only a block to the north, is a primary route through the community. Um, how does this piece play to um, people who aren't entering the park, but still see the park, drive by the park, um, engage with the park. Um, will it be illuminated? That is, uh, that's a possibility. Um, Roger asked if it will be illuminated or backlit. Um, that would be something that the design process would flesh out. Um, but I think that that would be an element that the, the, panel would be very interested in because the park does, uh, even when not activated, the park is still there and people still drive by it. Um, and I think that when I think about places in our city that people know what they are, um, I think about it's not just social media, right, but it's a, a way that we recognize them um, and experience them just through our, our daily routes. Roger, did you want to ask more about that? I saw your hand go up. I do. Um, so if it's going to be illuminated, 
um, or or lit? Um, are we going to be responsible for the electric, like like hiring the electrician to be able to route power through there, or is that going to already be in there and we just have to plug into it and prepare for it, or or like because that's going to be that would be a chunk of the budget um, having to do that. Yeah, I'll answer that, Roger. The electrical sort of feed, wires, lighting, that's all part of the park board's infrastructure around the artwork. So the artists would be asked to sort of assist us in coordinating lighting locations and how it would best enhance the artwork, but would not be responsible for lighting design or electrical engineering. I just want to add to that, though. Sometimes the artwork itself needs to be wired by an electrician. A lot depends on the lighting design, Roger. And so that's something we kind of need to talk about during the design process, because it depends on what kind of lighting you're doing. But there are ways to, during the design process, to design it in a way that you keep those expenses down to a minimum. The more bells and whistles, the more expensive it gets and the more professionals that need to be engaged. Yeah, that's a good clarification, Mary. I think my comment is if we're if we're just looking to put light upon artwork, we have the ability to do that with our work. If the lighting is itself is part of the art, um, then that is part of the um, artist's work. Great. Uh, are there more questions about the facade opportunity? Okay. Um, obviously, this is a comp. This piece particularly is complicated, and so um, and exciting and. Uh, oh, um, Mary, do you want to take um, lighting coming out of the budget? There's a, a question about what do we mean? So for this particular work, there are many ways that light gets integrated into art. Dan is saying that if basically putting lights somewhere near the artwork that light up the artwork, that illuminate it, that that could be part of the construction budget. If the artwork itself is a light sculpture, for example, and has lighting in it that's part of the artwork, that will need to come out of the budget. And it might also require that you bring on board a lighting designer, depending on how complicated it is. And you might need some other kind of expert to do some wiring. So it, there isn't an easy yes, no question when it comes to a light sculpture. Um, it, it's very dependent on your design and the type of lighting you want to integrate. We can help you keep it simple. And I think that speaks, Mary, to the to the process itself and why um, why it's so important to be working on the design in a collaborative way so that um, feasibility and costs are something everyone is helping support and, and think through. And I think this is also a good time to just remember that you are not proposing a design at this point. You are applying based on your qualifications. You are not, so at this point, you're not going to tell us whether you're doing a light sculpture. The design happens once you're selected. Great. OK, I'm going to keep moving here. Obviously, if more questions come up, uh, we can come back to this. OK, um, the next opportunity would be the vinyl murals. Um, Dan spoke a little bit about these as well. Uh, if you see the red boxes in the image, those are the windows that face east. They face the houses um, across James Avenue. And um, with that running track going around, it is a, a design opportunity to also offer a little bit of 
um, privacy and lessen the impact on the residents. Um, there, I think it's worth saying the design process for this again, after the artist is selected, this could be, um, each opportunity will be considered as its own opportunity for artists, um, that there will be a need to render these for printing digitally, but that does not mean that the artist has to be exclusively a digital artist. Any questions about the vinyls? Okay. In that same space, uh, the field house mural, you saw the mural um, in that other image as well. So this, Dan, am I right? This is the north wall of the field house, right? We're looking north in this image. That is correct. Yep. Um, but on the lower level, obviously we see the basketball court. So durability in the interior space, something to be thought about. Um, I believe this is a drywall opportunity. Um, the next one which is on cinder block, the youth focused lounge mural. Um, and it's important you'll notice that we feel this is an emerging artist opportunity. The space is a youth focused space and there is uh, a youth council um, at North Commons Park um, who I think would be really excited to be engaged in this process with the artist. And then we have the entry lobby, lobby mural. Um, and Dan, this one's also drywall, correct? Yeah, currently drywall, but uh, obviously flexible to figure out the best substrate for the artist. Great. Okay. So I know there's been a lot of uh, questions. A lot of you are here to understand what to submit. Um, I, I'm going to jump ahead because this is sort of the technical piece. Actually, I'm not going to jump ahead. I will say, because um, someone had a question, I think, earlier about what to apply for and um, how we're going to assign uh, which artists fit which opportunity. And um, I would recommend that you think about your own desires um, because you're not asked to to do a design as part of this process right you're only submitting your qualifications um, and with this number of opportunities we have we have uh, an exciting time to really spread the wealth and give many people um, I'm gonna say opportunity again uh, to be part of this project so um, that doesn't mean you can't select all, but I think that you will know where you will be most successful, um, what excites you artistically, what your experience speaks to the most. Um, so those are my those are my general comments there. Um, it is an unusual opportunity. Let's see, Marcia, will the spaces or interior murals be exclusively painted. Um, yes, great. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Right. So I think the main issue there, Marcia, is really a durability question and um, vinyl versus paint and some of those considerations. Okay. Um, when you think about submitting your application, I really think the narrative description is where you should be uh, focusing your energies. Um, again, the committee, the, the steering committee has shaped this. It's a slightly longer narrative request than we typically see coming out of the city. And um, 
this is, I think, where you really need to dig in. So um, I am going to read these, and I pulled them out for a reason. So first of all, what is your artistic process, and how does it create a sense of belonging and connection through the work? This is the thing we want to know most about you. Uh, because you're being hired to design and engage and be part of this whole process, what is that going to look like? Um, what are your strengths? What do you bring to that? And obviously the second question builds on that. How will you engage community to inform your process design and installation of the public art? Um, and I, I think it's important to say, like, I'm not, not, I don't think any of us are asking you to design a hypothetical timeline and propose that. It's really a, about values and about where those outside voices fit in your process. Right, like, is it, is it listening? Is it uh, gathering images? Is it activity based? Like, I think thinking about where you would meet with the engagement pieces and what you would do with that information. Uh, number three, what are your connections to North Minneapolis, and how would they inform your process and artwork? Um, I know some of you have already asked about this. This is an important question. Um, I think to answer some of the questions I've received in emails and seen in the chat, we we don't have a residency requirement. The right, we don't say you have to live in North Minneapolis. And um, the committee, though wants you to be connected to the community. And that's what you need to explain to us. What does that mean? Um, I know words like live, work often get tossed around. Um, in North Minneapolis, uh, in other things I've done, sometimes we've said live, work, worship. Um, I'm cautious to give you too many examples because I think that uh, there are other ways that you could be connected to the community, but I think it's important to point out um, that North Minneapolis is a community that has experienced historic disinvestment, um, extractive policies, um, and it's very important to the committee that these opportunities are rooted in the community and lift up the community. And then the last piece of your narrative, if if you are a team, um, we wanna know more about your team and how you work together, what your history is. Okay, and I see Jenny, you have a question. If we are applying as a team, collaborating already and both are artists, do we do a combo explanation of our processes and showcasing or how we would work together. Mary, do you want to take that question? Yeah, so you're so if you're applying as a team, and I think if you read the requirements, you'll see this. You're submitting separate resumes, you're submitting, but your narrative is one narrative. And it should talk about, as uh Dudley just said, at the last bullet point on that slide. It should talk about how you've worked together as a team, but you should answer those questions together, how you would do it together. I mean, obviously, if you have different connections to North Minneapolis, then you should explain your individual connections to Minneapolis, but you're doing one narrative. Amanda asks, do we have to keep the descriptions to a single page or are we writing as much as we feel is relevant in terms of the narrative? Yeah, um, I mean, I think it's Im important um, that everyone is given the same opportunity. So you'll notice the narrative says two page maximum. It typically is a one page maximum. Um, we so I think a two page maximum is what you should do. And um, we want the selection panel to have the opportunity to read 
everyone's application thoroughly. And so sometimes more is not more, you know, um, I think uh, descriptions to a single page. Okay. Does that answer your question? I mean, if you are applying as a team, your narrative still needs to be two pages. Okay. Great. Uh, here's some tips from another project manager. Um, so, where's my time? Oh, the timeline slot. Okay. Um, yeah, direct your questions to us. If you have questions, obviously you can follow up with an email. Um, the city does publish an, a, a basically an addendum to the call, which are all the questions and their answers as a follow up to this. And those questions need to be submitted um, by April 22nd. So that's Monday. Um, and then those questions and this recording will be posted. Um, read the submission guidelines carefully. Hey, Dudley, just to clarify. Yeah, all questions should go to Dudley. Do not oh. send them to Dan <laughs> or me. We will not answer them. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, I think this application piece is really important. You've got to go through the city's system. You can't email me a PDF. Um, you can certainly let us know if you had trouble, if something didn't work, um, but you can't send us anything separately. It has to all go through the system. Mary. Do, yes. and. Um, did you put the intent to apply deadline in your? Yeah, I have all the okay. deadlines coming in. Okay, cool. Apply. Yeah. Here Good. are the important dates. So um, they're not in order. I apologize. I meant to move the April 24th down. Uh, okay, so here we are, April 19th. This is the informational meeting. On Monday will be the last day for questions. Then on Wednesday, we hope to have all your questions answered and we will post them with the video on the call for artists website. So I would say more questions uh, are the more the better. <laughs> Not to overwhelm me, but I think it's important <laughs> to get as much figured out as possible. Um, the intent to apply form, I know many of you on this call have already filled it out, but some of you emailed me for the link and I know we're probably thinking about whether you want to check the intent to apply form. Um, we need that filled out by Monday the 29th, so 10 days from now. And then the call will close Friday afternoon, May 3rd at 4 p.m. The following week, we will be looking and organizing your submissions. Um, the steering panel will meet. And then the week of May 13th, you will hear from us um, if you made the finalist made it to finalist and then um, after that you will be invited to submit more materials go through an interview process and then you find the actual artist for the five opportunities will be selected in early june um you cannot send me an application by email i'm sorry you have to send it the, there are links. Um, Mary's just put the intent to apply form in there. Um, and there are links on the call page for you to submit. Actually, there aren't. Actually, there aren't. the way it works is, is that if you fill, when you fill out the intent to apply form, we will send you a link to a folder to upload your application and okay. instructions about how to do it. That's why you need to fill out the intent to apply form. You don't fill it out, then you won't get a folder. You won't be able to upload your application. OK. So don't email me your application. <laughs> it will not count. When can we expect that folder after the intent to apply form closes? I think we can start sending links if you to the people who have uh, 
filled okay. out the intent to apply. Okay. So we Great. can do that. I, we can do that next week so that you can test the folder. It's always good to test the folder. Okay. So uh, Dudley, let me go back to some of the que questions that people brought up early on. Um, insurance. Mm -hmm. um, right. So some of the contracts will be with the city and some of the contracts will be with the park board. So the contract for the exterior artwork will be with the city and you will be required to at a minimum carry general liability insurance. Dan, do you want to talk about the park board and the insurance? I think we are generally going to be leading on similar processes to what the city's processes are. So uh, we will require that same level of insurance list, uh, listing the park board as additionally insured if you're going to be performing work on park land. Great. Um, Julie asks, if we can talk about the materials that would be required from the finalists. Uh, when you, if you're selected as a finalist, you will find out what you need to submit as a finalist. Okay. You'll get a document that tells you what to submit. And Capricia, just making sure I'm following, the committee will pick five separate artists for each mural or pick a team that applied. Each opportunity will be considered separately. I think that's the best way to answer that. Um, we will not pick one artist or artist team for all five. Okay, so as a solo artist, I could apply for all five? You could. Okay, okay, thank you. So one of the things if you go to, I put the link to the call, the RFP, or the RFQ, the call for artists and the attachments in the chat. If you have not read the call for artists, I strongly encourage you to read it. Dudley just went over a bunch of it and Dan too. Um, but read it. It's there's really, a lot more. There's a you you want to read it. You want to really know what you need to do to apply. So, but one of the attachments is a cover sheet, and on the cover sheet, you that's where you indicate which ones you're applying for. So go look at that cover sheet. It also has a checklist of everything that you need to submit, and that, that will help you remember what to submit. Um, Dudley, uh, Roger also had a question about whether or not the artist is going to have to advance the money for materials and they get paid back. Oh, right. And so I just want to, I, I think I can speak for both the city and the park board. We do not expect you to pay for your expenses out of pocket before you get paid by us. We'll work with you on what your expenses are and what your cash flow will need to be in order for you to do the project and develop a payment plan based on that. And that's true as well for the park board. Great. Great. Um, what uh, other questions do people have? We have uh, we have a little time left here. Dudley, uh, there was a early question about um, what kind of engagement we require. Do oh. you feel like we've touched on that? Who asked the engagement question? I don't know, because I typed it when somebody was introducing <laughs> themselves. Great. Um, I, I, I can speak to that again and say that the engagement is a piece of your qualifications. It is a piece of your proposal, ultimately. Um, I value that as an artist as part of your process. And so uh, when you are speaking to your qualifications, right, I think you want to highlight the strengths in your process as an artist. And um, that that is a huge part of what you are submitting to us right now. 
we don't have a prescription for what that looks like. Okay, uh, Julie, do you require bonding of your artists, performance and purchase bonds? Mary says no. Dan, no. No. Okay. Other questions? Have we addressed all your questions? Kelsey yes. has a hand raised. Thanks, Kelsey. Go Hi. ahead. Sorry, my camera's off. Um, I'm noting that this is a relatively like small group of artists for a lot of artwork. And being new to the public, more public art space beyond schools, I'm wondering if there's a way for us to contact each other, the people who are on this call, if anybody would be willing to be reachable <laughs> after this call, because I realize when we leave this call, we're not going to be able to um, find one another. I don't know if that's a possibility. Well, I'm in the recording. I suppose you're... you're um... Does the chat go, stay with the recording, Mary? Do you know in Teams? No, no. And we didn't record your introductions. So um, I, I, I would also say though, I mean, I think you can contact each other, but remember if a team is applying, it is strongly encouraged that that team has worked together before. Okay. Um, so I would, although this, looks like a great group of artists and you might want to call them and say hey, you want to work on another project sometime but um we are strongly encouraging teams who have worked together i understand thank you great um other questions Okay, well, as you as you think about things and think if you have any additional questions, um, I'll certainly be happy to sit on the teams if anyone wants to ask them individually. Otherwise, uh, I really am excited to see some faces and um, to begin really getting to know who might be thinking about it. And I look forward to your applications um, and to your questions that are due by Monday. <laughs> um, your questions really help me too, as this is my first project. Um, so really it, it's useful to know uh, what we haven't explained because some of it I need to learn as well. So please don't hesitate um, to ask those questions via email. Um, or as I said, I'll stay on the, the team's meeting here a little bit longer. Otherwise, thank you so much for your time and your interest in the project, and I hope you have a, a wonderful day. Should we stop? Thank the you. Thank you so much.